I want to now look at um, how Grignard reagents react with esters. In the last lecture, we showed you that we could take a nucleophile and react it with an ester. And if that nucleophile was an OH, we would do a hydrolysis, so hydroxide. If it was an alkoxide, we could do a transesterification. And if we used an amine, which is a good nucleophile, mild, but good nucleophile, we can actually get an amide being formed. And they all have the same pattern of a nucleophile adding to an ester. Now, if you follow the principles of what happened in those reactions and we extend it to a Grignard, we can actually predict what the product will be over here. And it leads us on to some really interesting um, things uh, related to chemistry. So let's just look at what would actually happen. Let's predict what would happen in this reaction if we did this mechanism. So um, what we remember is that Grignard reagents are actually a high energy sigma bond. That's the nucleophilic part of it. Uh, you can draw it as a a minus charge on the carbon, but that's not strictly correct. So we'll do it this way. And we can show the addition of that very fantastic nucleophile to the uh, carbonyl uh, carbon, which is very electrophilic. And so when that happens, we get this intermediate over here. So we get the O minus. We've now added our phenyl. That was our nucleophile. <coughs> and we're sitting with this OR prime over there. So let's just color code everything, so we've got our phenyl, oh, there's the nucleophile, we've got that, and we've got this OR, which is the ester. Uh, this could have been a methyl ester, for instance, ethyl ester, it doesn't really matter, uh, but some uh, ester. At this point, we formed a tetrahedral intermediate, which we know is unstable, uh, and so it wants to collapse, and if it's going to collapse, this negative charge needs to come in and go down like that to form the car reform the carbonyl, at this point, we have to see we've got a couple of bonds here that could break. And which bond is going to break? Well, this side is going to be some carbon. So that's kicking out a C minus leaving group. It's not going to happen. Absolutely not. It's terrible. That's a horrible high pKa leaving group. Not going to happen. This way is also a high pKa leaving group. That's why this is such a good nucleophile. And so our only option over here is to kick out what generally would not be considered a good leaving group but it is uh, an alkoxide with a pKa of around 16. And so what we get as a product is the ketone like this <clears throat> and OR minus. Now, once we get to this point over here, this is where the tricky stuff starts to happen. Well, it's not that tricky. It's just the interesting things if we think about reactivity. So... This is a nucleophile, and we've got a ketone over here, and ketones are also electrophilic. In fact, they are more reactive than esters themselves. They are, yeah, more reactive. Now, if this O- minus adds in over here, we're going to go back to this, but the point is this is not stable, so we're stuck. This, the reverse reaction could occur, but it's not going to occur because, uh, in any meaningful way, is because... Actually, this is the more stable. The ketone product is more stable. The problem is, is our Grignard reagent itself. You see, the Grignard reagent, when we do a reaction like this, this, this reaction has billions of these molecules and billions of these molecules. Well, more than billions. I mean, it's just it's an incredible amount, uh, depending on the scale of reaction that you're doing. But it's a huge number. And so this nucleophile can react with the ester, and it will form the ketone, but the ketone is more reactive than the ester itself. So in the presence of this Grignard reagent, even if you tried to add just one equivalent of Grignard reagent, the product is more reactive. And so what's going to happen is that a second molecule of the Grignard rea uh, reagent is going to come in and add a second time to our new ketone that was formed and our product is going to be the initially the alkoxide but once we protonate that after doing a workup we can assume that a workup has happened over there but i'm not going to draw it in um, at the moment but technically speaking this is the final product over there where we get what will be a tertiary alcohol once we protonate that at the end Grignard reactions, when they react with esters, they 
do it twice. They will react twice. And the reason for it is that the ester is actually not as reactive as the ketone. Well, we've kind of seen this before. We know, for instance, that sodium borohydride will reduce ketones, but not esters. That's because esters are not that reactive. And so what we need to get to um, in this course is <clears throat> having a list of what we call the um, reactivity series for, for carbonyls. Now, there are some carbonyls that you haven't seen yet, and so I'm going to introduce them to you now. I'm going to start on the most reactive side over here. So this is most reactive. Um, and the most reactive are carbonyls known as acid chlorides. So it looks like this. It's like a carbonyl with a super leaving group on it, a chlorine atom. And these are extremely reactive. Next door to them, we get... Um, molecules, and we'll see this in the next lecture, I'll build up on these um, in the next lecture, uh, are things that are known as anhydrides. These are also uh, a lot more reactive. And then we get to our aldehyde, our ketone, then comes our ester, And then the extremely unreactive one is our amides. I know that no, R2 over there could be an NH or something like that. So, so in terms of reactivity, these are super reactive. And then we move our way down like that over there to the least reactive on the side. Now, the reason for this reactivity um, has to do, uh, there's a lot of different features that are on here. Um, the first thing is that uh, com if you compare this to say the aldehyde over here, you've got a chlorine, which is more electronegative. So it's pulling electron density away from the carbonyl, making it much more electrophilic, which means that any nucleophile is gonna to wanna to get in there super fast. Uh, and when it reacts, we've got a good leaving group on it, so it'll react fast. And we'll see some examples of that in the future. This also has a leaving group on it. It's actually a carboxylate, which is like a carboxylic acid. And so for the same reason, that is also quite an electrophilic uh, center over there. <clears throat> it's Kind of a tune, that's why I said this one is way more reactive than this one over here, but it is, is more reactive uh, than, say, an aldehyde, which has nothing on it, just got a hydrogen over there. Ketone is less reactive than aldehyde. We've dealt with that in previous lectures because of steric hindrance as a re reagent or reaction, sorry, a nucleophile um, uh, adds to a carbonyl. It has to go through a tetrahedral intermediate, and that means that these two R groups come closer to each other. So it's steric hindrance. And over here, when you've got a straight ester like that, the lone pairs of electrons can overlap with the carbon, uh, the carbonyl pi bond, the antibonding, in fact, and that actually raises the LUMO slightly. Um, you can go look in your textbook uh, about that. It's a detail that's maybe a bit high grade, but uh, it raises the LUMO, so it makes this less reactive. And of course, the lone pair of electrons on a nitrogen are much higher in energy, so that overlap that occurs on an amide is almost complete. In fact, amides, because of that, tend to be kind of flat. They, they, they don't want to spin around around the sigma bond over here. In fact, it's, if you protonate an amide, it actually wants to protonate on the oxygen because it's more pushing electron density in towards the oxygen like that, just because of the, the excellent lone pairs um, on the nitrogen. So <clears throat> this is our reactivity series over here, and that explains why when a Grignard reacts with an ester, we have to do a double addition because the intermediate is way more reactive than, uh, than the product. So how do we solve this? What if we have to do a, a, a reaction where the Grignard, we don't want to get the alcohol. We want the Grignard to add just once. So we want to get to this point over here. This would be a very useful thing for us to do. Um, and it is a challenge because we can't just add one equivalent. Like I said, the problem with adding one equivalent is that once this reaction starts going, the intermediate is much more reactive. So we're going to get this as a side product, whether we like it or not. So it's going to be a terrible way of just adding once. Now, the textbook has a solution, which is not a solution. And we really need to just make sure that we are clear on that. Um, the solution is to take the Grignard and add it to a more reactive substrate. So in other words, the theory is that if you add this to an acid chloride, which is much more reactive, the product is then the ketone, which is less reactive, so we can control that reaction. 
That is something that sounds nice in theory, but in practice, it is all but impossible to do. Um, Grignard reagents are such good nucleophiles that at this stage over here, uh, it's still going to react with that. And in practice, in the literature, you just do not see that reaction occurring using an acid chloride to form the ketone. Um, there is a solution and it involves some new chemistry. It involves actually a type of an amide that forms over there. You see, what you're wanting to do is in order for this reaction to occur, what we want is we don't want this thing over here to eliminate. We actually want it to be held kind of in a stable form. We don't, if we can stop this, say for instance, we can just get that first reaction to occur and the tetrahedral intermediate to be stable in some way. Then once we do a workup of the reaction, we add acid and, and, and finish this reaction, that can then collapse and form the ketone. But at that stage, there's no more reagents. So we can only get it to happen once. And this is where we get to the solution. The most effective solution to this problem is using the Weinreb amide. And the Weinreb amide looks like this. It is a type of amide. So we've got this nitrogen over there. But what's on over here is something very special. It's a methoxy. This is the key thing that changes everything in this reaction. So it is a type of amide, and it's got a special name after the guy who did this, Weinreb. Um, <clears throat> and the Weinreb amide allows that intermediate, that tetrahedral intermediate, to become stable. So when we add MgBr like that, and this, remember, I'm just using a phenyl as an example because I was getting tired of all the R groups, but uh, it could have been any kind of Grignard reagent. <clears throat> when we add that, the, the Grignard reagent is going to react with the carbonyl just the same way that we did before. But now, in solution, this thing stands still. What happens is that, I'm going to put the phenyl here. <clears throat> what happens is that we get a complex being formed, which is stable. So we've got this MGBR, which is going to be connected to there. And this oxygen also coordinates to the magnesium. And we get this stable tetrahedral intermediate. And so at the end of the reaction, we actually end up with this. And what we need to do is we need to do a second step after adding that. We need to do a hydrolysis. So we can do this with adding some weak acid, aqueous acidic. And then what that does is it protonates this oxygen, collapses the salts, and this, this then can kick in and kick out the amide. So the amide will also be protonated to make it into a good leaving group. <clears throat> and our product ends up being the ketone. Now, some people have actually shown that you don't have to use the Weinreb amide um, uh, specifically. Some people have actually shown that we can, you can use other types of amides that are out there, but they're very specific and they, they're not as effective. This is a much more generic uh, example, and which is why uh, we need to learn about that. Um, <clears throat> the last thing I want to show you is connected to your practical, and it's just uh, an example of uh, a Grignard reacting with another amide, uh, a very simple amide. Um, I've shown you you're doing it, uh, this reaction over here. Uh, generally speaking, Grignards and amides are not that great because they're not super uh, electrophilic. In this case over here, this extra oxygen over there changes everything, and so it makes this a, a little bit easier. Um, but the, uh, in your practical, you're going to be doing an example where you are going to react with an amide, but a very special uh, amide. So you're going to have a molecule that looks something like this. So this is the Grignard. Um, and you're going to be adding to an amide, which I hope, once I draw this out over here, you recognize and you know exactly what that is over there. So this is an amide, but this is actually one of the solvents that you need to know in, your, in this course. And this is DMF. But because this is a four-mile amide over here, it's actually quite electrophilic because it's like an aldehyde type of example. And so when this reacts, we get this being formed over there. And so our intermediate looks like this. So we have an O minus. We've got the N with two uh, bonds on it. And of course, there was an H over there. I'll just draw it in because it's looking a bit messy. 
Um, and so we get this intermediate um, over there. Now, what does this intermediate do? In the reaction, it's kind of stuck because if this has to kick back in, which is what we want it to do, it has to kick out an N minus. And N minus is a terrible leaving group, so it, it doesn't want to do that. Um, so at the end of the reaction, this is another example of a stable tetrahedral intermediate. At the end of the reaction, we add H3O plus. What that does is it protonates the OH over there. It protonates the nitrogen over there. And we can then kick back in and kick out a neutral amine, which is an absolutely fine leaving group. And the product looks like this. And we've kicked off the dimethylamine, which will be protonated. In fact, if it's under acidic conditions, it'll be doubly protonated, uh, which means you can wash it out of solution. So this is a way of introducing, using DMF, which is a solvent, it's a way of introducing a formal group at the end of... Um, uh, from some sort of Grignard reagent, and so this is an excellent uh, procedure, and you'll be doing that in your prac later in the semester.